Venus, the planet of love, money, beauty, pleasure, comforts, all the delicious things that we experience in this earthly life. Venus is entering Leo, fiery, dramatic, loves to love, super creative, shine your light bright, Leo. And Venus will be in Leo for four whole months, my friend, from June 5th until October 9th of 2023. This is an extra long time for Venus to be in one sign. And Venus will be here for four months because Venus is going retrograde in Leo. So in this video, I want to share with you how can we best navigate this four-month stint of Venus in Leo? How can we move through this retrograde period with the most ease and grace? I am calling this Venus in Leo transit a self-love upgrade. This is calling for radical self-love. This is even calling for a devotion, a true devotion to your inner child. So we all have the potential to make real strides in our self-love during this transit, which then will ripple out to all of our other relationships, improving those as well. Of course, as always, I will be doing readings for all 12 signs, letting you know in which area of your natal astrology chart will you be experiencing this transit of Venus in Leo, including Venus retrograde in Leo. I will be pulling an oracle card for all of us as well. So be sure and watch your rising sign, but also your sun sign. This is where you're going to experience this on a personality life force level. And then your moon sign. Your moon sign is where you'll be experiencing this Venus in Leo period emotionally, passionately. And since Venus is very much about relationships, this is an important placement as well. But before you jump to your 12 sign readings, I strongly encourage you to watch the introduction to this video because I'm going to be talking about what are the key dates of Venus in Leo? What aspects will Venus be making to other planets that we're all going to feel? We're all going to feel that collectively. And then who will be most affected? Which signs, which degrees will be most affected during this Venus in Leo period? And finally, I have some recommendations for you for Venus retrograde. I have some recommendations, good things to do during a Venus retrograde in Leo, and then things that I suggest that you put off until after Venus goes direct again. But before I get into it, I want to say hello and welcome. Welcome to my channel. If you're new to me, welcome back to my channel. If you've been watching my videos, thank you so much for your comments, for connecting with me. I absolutely love connecting with you. And welcome to all my Sunday chat friends. We meet here at 9 a.m. Pacific time every Sunday. I'm so happy that you're here communing with me. And while you're here in the Sunday chat, if you take a moment to give this video a thumbs up, to click like, to leave me a comment and be sure to subscribe and you really help the algorithm put my videos out to more people when you subscribe to my channel and tap the notification bell so you get a reminder and you don't miss a video. Okay, my friends, so let me give you a timeline of Venus and retrograde. If you have pen and pencil, you may want to write these dates down. One of the great things about astrology is it helps us prepare. It helps us to put some dates on a calendar and know what to expect. So Venus enters Leo on June 5th. Venus will be in Leo for two weeks from June 5th to June 19th before it goes into the pre-retrograde shadow period. What is a pre-retrograde shadow period? <laughs> that is a mouthful. That's the time that Venus begins to slow down. And it's the time that Venus is transiting through the degrees that it will then retrograde back over during the actual retrograde period. So often it's during this pre-shadow period that we get a glimpse of what we'll be dealing with during the retrograde. We may get hints or clues about what will come up for us to work with. Venus will station retrograde July 22nd at 28 degrees of Leo, and then it will travel back to 12 degrees of Leo and station direct September 3rd. It will then have a post retrograde shadow period from September 3rd to October 9th, and then it will leave Leo and go into Virgo. The post shadow phase is when we're integrating whatever we learned during the retrograde period. So this is a total of four months that we're going to have Venus in Leo. And I actually love Venus in Leo energy so much. So I'm going to share with you why in a moment. But first, I want to let you know who will be most affected, 
who will feel this Venus in Leo period, especially the retrograde, most intensely and most personally? Those of you who have planets or points in your natal astrology chart between 10 and 29 degrees of the fixed signs, Leo, Aquarius, Scorpio, or Taurus, you will feel this transit more personally. Also, those of you who have planets or points in your natal charts between zero and one degrees of the mutable signs, Gemini, Sagittarius, Virgo, or Pisces, you will also feel this transit of Venus and Leo retrograde more intensely and personally. But we're all going to feel this transit of Venus and Leo. Some of us will have aspects such as sextiles and trines that will feel easier and more graceful. And others of us are going to feel the collective transits that are going on where Venus is aspecting other planets, which I'm also going to cover in this video. So Venus rules all the yummy comforts, beauties, pleasures of life. Venus rules our relationships. It rules love. It rules lovers. It rules best friendships. It rules beauty on all levels, how we beautify ourselves, the things that we look to for beauty, the things we adore, the arts, music, singing, dancing, painting. Venus rules pleasures. Think about eating and your favorite foods and getting massaged, walking on the beach, whatever is pleasurable to you. It also rules what we would call the comforts of life. And money, I can't leave money out. Venus rules our finances as well. Now, what about Venus in Leo? How does Venus act in Leo? Venus in Leo rules the fifth house of true love, romance, children, creativity, and our inner child. The fifth house is all about pleasure, enjoyment of life. The fifth house is playfulness. It's where we're invited to be a kid again, where we're invited to go back to our childhood and experience the passion, the spontaneity, the joy, the joie de vivre of life, the things we did as children, because perhaps we had more time then to do the things we loved, or we were less serious, or we felt like we were less responsible and we could be more free. The fifth house is freedom. Freedom to be your authentic self, to shine your light bright. This is why Leo is connected to shining. Leo is ruled by the sun. Leo rules the heart, the heart chakra. So what I love about Leo energy is that it loves exuberantly. It creates exuberantly. It lives full out. It's the full out coming fully alive energy. And Leo loves to celebrate. I have two Leo parents. They're both on the other side. They've transitioned. But imagine growing up with two exuberant, spontaneous, in the moment, live life full out parents. That was my childhood. And it was kind Kind of wild, I have to say. But what I loved about it is that when things were good, when my parents were in a good mood and they were feeling generous, it was really fun. So Leo is associated with passion, with pulling out all the stops, with going big, and with prolonging romance. For Leos, romance is a lifelong endeavor. Leos don't want the romance in a relationship to end. And if you've studied the phases of a new romantic relationship, you know that romance is just the beginning phase, right? Where we have the endorphins going wild, where We've got the butterflies in the stomach where we're exuberantly excited. We feel giddy. We can't sleep at night. We forget to pay our bills. We know these things are associated with the stage, with the romantic stage of a relationship. But then when we get really get to know the person and they get to know us well, ideally the relationship grows into something else. Now that doesn't mean we can't bring the romance back into our relationships. Absolutely. I am a huge lover of romance myself. I love creating beauty. And you know, we all have our own definition of romance. We all create romance in our own way. But during a Venus retrograde in Leo, we can have those sparks, those flames, that hot, hot kind of romance come in really quickly and then die out really quickly. So it's something that we want to watch out for. I caution everyone, if you meet somebody new during the Venus retrograde or just before a Venus retrograde period, I advise you to go slow. Enjoy the giddiness. Enjoy the highs. But do your very best to keep your feet on the ground, knowing that around a Venus retrograde period, often new relationships don't last. They can last, absolutely. Some will, but a lot of them don't. They come in quickly. They show us something about ourselves. They 
help us to increase our self-love. And then when the relationship has served its purpose, the person often moves on or we move on. But I'm not saying we can't have fun during a Venus retrograde. Absolutely. We just want to have our eyes wide open. Now, the archetype of Leo is the lion, is the regal lion, the leader, the leader of the pack, so to speak. So in Leo energy, we definitely want to be seen. We want to be acknowledged. We want to be respected. It's very important in Leo energy that we feel accepted we feel included, and that we have our light reflected back to us by others. Leo energy is all about loyalty. Leos are very loyal. So during a Venus retrograde period, we are extra sensitive to all of these kinds of things. Are my friends, my spouse, my significant others being loyal to me? Am I being loyal to them? Do I feel respected in this relationship? Do we have each other's back? Or is there something kind of murky? under the surface where you feel like this actually may not be a true friend or someone not being true to you. It's very easy during a Venus retrograde period in Leo for us to be extra sensitive and for us to feel slighted if we aren't feeling celebrated, included, acknowledged by those who are close to us. So like any retrograde period, Venus retrograde is about reviewing. It's about reflecting. We're looking back during a Venus retrograde. We're not looking forward. We're looking back. We're going inward. Venus retrogrades are not the best time to launch something new or start something new. They're a time to more assess our current life, our current relationships, our current finances, and see where we are. Now that said, a lot of times old loves come into our life, old friends, former exes, former lovers re-enter our lives. Often this is so we can have closure with that person or we can clear something up that we thought maybe we cleared that we didn't. Could a past life significant person come back into your life and stay in your life? Yes, they could. But if you meet somebody during this Venus retrograde period and you instantly feel this strong sense of familiarity, I feel like I've known them forever. They must be a past life relationship. Again, my advice is go slow. Don't rush into it. Let them show themselves to you. Let them reveal themselves because during a Venus retrograde, like all retrogrades, often something is hidden. We can't see it. We don't know it until... Venus goes direct. We often cannot see it. So because Venus rules our finances and our possessions, our material possessions, this is also not the best time to make big ticket purchases. It's not the best time to buy a house or to rent a home, you know, or to buy a new computer, for example. If you can possibly wait, and sometimes we can't, sometimes we lose our phone or that kind of thing. If you can possibly wait, this is a really good time for exploring, for searching things out, for doing research, for gathering information, and maybe house hunting if you want a new house. Maybe traveling to different locations to see places you like if you want to move to a new location. Just not fully committing yet. This is a time, Venus Retrograde, to commit to yourself, to commit to your own well-being, to up-level your self-love. I encourage you to make a pact with yourself. I will not abandon myself. No matter what happens, I will not abandon my own needs. I will not do something that I don't want to do in order to please someone else. I will not go to an event where there are people that I feel are toxic to me just because it'll make someone else happy. I will be fully aware of my energy. And if I'm in a situation where I am feeling very uncomfortable or upset or in pain, I give myself full permission to leave. These are all beautiful self-care practices you can do. Venus retrograde is a great time to reconnect with old friends and acquaintances. It's a great time for creative projects, for exploring your own creativity, for reviewing your heart's desires, for making a vision board, for example. It's also a great time to make a plan to launch something or a plan to travel or a plan to build something. I highly encourage you not to get a beauty treatment during this time, especially if it's a permanent beauty treatment, any kind of plastic surgery. Definitely you want to put that off till after Venus retrograde. But I've also noticed during my own Venus retrograde periods that 
buying clothes, a lot of times they just don't fit right or they're just not, you know, we often don't feel as attractive during a Venus retrograde. So it's harder to find the things that we really want that make us feel beautiful during this time. And I know someone very close to me who got married during a Venus retrograde. They did not consult me. They got married during a Venus retrograde. They're super happily married. So of course, this is not a hard and fast rule, but I encourage you to to not get married or engaged during a Venus retrograde period either. So when was Venus last retrograde in Leo? Venus retrogrades every 18 months. It goes back into the same sign every eight years. This means that eight years ago, 2015, Venus was retrograde in Leo. And then eight years before that, in 2007, Venus was also retrograde in Leo. So you may want to look back to the summer of 2015, around the same time as this Venus retrograde, late July to early September, and then late July to early September of 2007. And think about what was going on for you during that time. How did it feel for you? What came up for you? And if that was a hard time for you, my friend, remember two things. One, you are not the same person you were then. You have grown and you have evolved. And what did you learn from that time? If it was difficult, what did you learn that you would apply to your current life if you were to be faced with a similar experience? Also, remember that there are always different transits, other transits going on during the Venus retrograde period which makes this Venus retrograde period somewhat different from the last two. What will likely be similar for you are the themes, the themes that arise. So let me give you a quick example. In 2015, I moved. I moved. It was kind of an epic move for me because I moved out of state from Seattle, where I raised my children and lived for 25 years. I moved from Seattle to Laguna Beach, California, where I grew up. I went back to my roots. Now, when I first arrived, I knew I would have to find a place to live. So I rented a room in a former colleague's home. I rented a room from her. And that was a good Venus retrograde thing to do. It was a temporary situation. I rented a room from her and I looked for a place to live. However, because it was Venus retrograde, I was not finding a beautiful place to live. I looked and looked and looked for six weeks during the whole Venus retrograde period and I still didn't find it. Meanwhile, my relationship dynamic with the person I was renting from was interesting. Let's say that it was interesting because she was going through a grief process. She had ended a relationship and she was processing all of that. So that affected the energy in the house, right? It affected the energy and how it felt for me to be there. So after Venus turned direct, in fact, right when Venus turned direct, I found another place. I found a beach cottage, a beautiful beach cottage across the street from the beach in Laguna Beach that was only going to be available for one month, one month. But during that time of living in that beach cottage, my mail carrier, who I told I was looking for a place to live, my mail carrier found me another place to live in the same neighborhood, a permanent one year lease. And I ended up staying there for seven years. So think of Venus retrograde as a process time. It is not a time when we usually have something manifest that's going to be in our lives for a long time. We may be starting that manifestation process, but often it takes till the retrograde is over to actually get our manifestation. And funny enough, during the 2007 Venus retrograde in Leo, I actually traveled to California two times. So 2015, I moved to California. 2007, eight years earlier, I went to California two different times. I took my kids to Disneyland and Laguna Beach, and I went to a high school reunion. And that high school reunion was so much fun. So again, Venus Retrograde, a beautiful time to reconnect with old friends. My trip with my kids That was a little bit up and down emotionally, I have to say. Why? Because we were all going through the aftermath of my divorce. We were all going through our feelings. So we went to beautiful places, but I got to say, my kids were not always exuding the enthusiasm, the Leo exuberance that I hoped that they would. But I learned a lot from that experience. And once again, not self-abandoning. Just because someone else that you're with isn't having fun doesn't mean you can't have fun. Just because someone else isn't appreciating you doesn't mean you can't appreciate you. This is the time to make our inner child feel safe and secure. How do we do that? There are lots of tools for that. 
I have some of those tools in my book, The Magic of Saying Yes, Answering Your Heart's True Calling, which is linked in my banner and also in the description box below if you want to check that out. I also have an inner child healing video for you, a beautiful time to do that. It's free. It's on YouTube. And I will link that in the description box below as well. Okay, my friend. So I want to get to the 12 sign readings, but I first want to give you a very quick, and I mean quick, rundown of the dates that Venus retrograde will be making aspects to other power player planets. Starting with June 5th, when Venus enters Leo, when Venus enters Leo, and it's still going to be direct at this point, Venus will oppose Pluto and Aquarius. Take your power back. Reclaim your power. July 23rd, July 23rd, when Venus stations retrograde, Pluto will be at 29 degrees of Capricorn. It will square the nodes of the moon. Now I have a separate video for you on the nodes moving into Aries and Libra. And I talk about the square in that video. So I won't repeat myself. But I also want to say that as Pluto is squaring the nodes of the moon on July 23rd, the sun and cancer will also be opposing Pluto and Capricorn. So this is a very intense transit. And it may feel to you like you're hemmed in like you you're in a box and you don't know what your options are. And all you have all of these different parts of you that want to initiate something new that want to go forward that want to take the reins and you may feel some inner conflict during that time if you're dealing with other people and it's stressful boundaries setting clear boundaries if you don't know which way to go tune into spirit ask spirit for answers ask spirit to help you show you the way and a beautiful question is what is best for me in this moment what is best for my inner child right now august 6th through 10th when venus is retrograde in leo black moon lilith is going to conjunct venus this means that you could have dark fears coming up during this time what i want you to know that's very helpful to me black moon lilith is almost always Fears that do not come to fruition. They are simply fears from past lives, past experiences. These are emotions that we haven't processed before, coming up for us to process them, for us to free ourselves. So feel the fears, feel the freedom, and remember that Black Moon Lilith fears rarely, rarely come to fruition in this lifetime. August 9th through 12th, Venus will square Uranus and Taurus. Uranus and Taurus can bring something shocking, surprises, things we didn't expect, disruptive situations that are very uncomfortable while they're happening. However, they are ultimately liberating for us. Uranus wants to free us. And with Uranus, it's super helpful to remember that there's always a workaround. There's always a solution. There's always a workaround. So remember that you have options, even if in the moment you can't see them immediately. August 13th, Venus conjuncts the sun. The sun comes out bright and strong. This is when we're going to be very in touch with our heart's desires. We're going to get very clear, I feel, on what our heart wants most going forward. And then August 13th to 15th, we have a beautiful transit of Venus trining Chiron and Aries. Chiron, the wounded healer, where we have a core wound, Venus trines that. This is positive energy flow. This is the wind at our back. This is ease and grace and some beautiful energy coming in to heal a wound. It's harmonizing and it's healing. So this is really good news. And then on August 22nd, we have Venus retrograde making a square aspect to Jupiter. Jupiter expands what it touches. If we have our mindsets in a positive place, this Venus retrograde aspecting Jupiter can be a really beautiful uplift and expansion for us as well. Good luck, fortune, and a gift, perhaps a gift. Just be careful not to overdo it, not to overcommit during a Jupiter square. And finally, my friend, August 23rd to September 3rd, we're going to have Venus retrograding overlapping with Mercury retrograde in Virgo. I know, a Mercury retrograde happening at the same time as a Venus retrograde? Are you kidding me? What, what, what? But here's the thing. During this Mercury retrograde, new information is going to come to light, which will help us in our manifestations as this Venus retrograde winds down. It will be an invitation to be flexible and to let our minds adapt. And remember, with Venus 
in Leo, we can actually be stubborn. We can actually dig in our heels and be very, it's a fixed sign. So we can be very fixed in our ways, set in our ways. So try to remain open and flexible and take the very best care that you can of that inner little one. Extra TLC for your inner child. Okay, my friends, so let's do the 12 sign readings now. Be sure and listen to your rising sign. The rising sign is the area of life in which you're going to be having this transit of Venus in Leo. Your sun sign is where you're going to experience this Venus in Leo retrograde in your personality, your ego, your life force energy. And your moon sign is how you'll be experiencing this Venus retrograde on an emotional level and in your relationships. So let's start with Leo. Hello, beautiful Leo. This is your transit, your transit of Venus in Leo, and it's happening in your first house, your first house of the self. So what a beautiful transit for increasing, upgrading, up-leveling your self-love, your devotion to you, beautiful Leo. Committing to yourself to shine your light even brighter and to not let anyone else dump a bucket of water on your enthusiasm, your joie de vivre. Now, Leo, this first house is not only your identity, it's also your appearance, it's your vitality. So it's your energy level. So do not be surprised or disheartened if your energy levels drop a bit during a Venus retrograde. That would be very common. A Venus retrograde pulls us inward. This is where you're reviewing, you're renegotiating perhaps some of your relationships. Remember that you have your seventh house opposite this first house during this Venus retrograde. Seventh house is committed relationships. So you very likely may be reviewing some of your relationships, asking, am I still a match? Are they still a match for my energy? Are we growing together? Do I want to continue these relationships? This is a time when you're doing this kind of reflection. Don't do plastic surgery during this time, as I mentioned in the introduction to this video. You also may find that you want to completely, this is a time that we want a change often. We want to completely redo something, but it's not a time to do any of that on a permanent level. If you really, really want to change your hair color or something, just know that you may not like it. You can always change it back, but just go into it knowing this is an experiment. This is, I'm exploring this and I may need to change it. You could also have an ex come back into your life. This is known as a second chances kind of transit, or you could have a past life friend or lover return either to show you something about yourself you haven't seen, to create closure, or perhaps sometimes, occasionally, it is a love or a friendship that lasts for this lifetime as well. So beautiful Leo, I am going to shuffle the cards. These are the Cheryl Richardson self-care cards, which I thought were so perfect for a Venus retrograde in Leo. And let's pull a card for you. Beautiful Leo. <sighs> Your card is time. I love this card so much because here is your inner child on this card, whether you're male or female. She is dressed in gold. Gold is your color, Leo. This is the regalness of you. This is the royalty of you. She's looking back at you. She's showing you time is not forever. Yes, we're in a universe where everything is happening at once. In a sense, time is fluid on a spiritual level. But I also feel like this is saying, don't put off what you want to do. I think it was Wayne Dyer who said, don't die with your music still in you. Don't put off anymore doing the things that you love, beautiful Leo. And this card message is schedule a sacred date with yourself. You deserve time for your life. You deserve time for your life. This is your life, Leo. This is your time to shine. This is your time to devote at the very least a sacred date to your own joy, fun, pleasure, well-being, because that is going to make you shine even brighter. As you bring your self, your work, your expression, your purpose out into the world, even more beautiful, beautiful Leo. And take extra good care of yourself. Give yourself extra TLC. This is the time to prioritize you. If there ever was a time, this is the time to prioritize you, Leo.
Okay, Cancers. Hello, beautiful Cancer family. I have my moon and my rising in Cancer. So this transit of Venus in Leo and the Venus Leo in Leo retrograde is happening in your second house, Cancers. Your second house of income, of self-love, of values. The second house is everything material. It's where we source our safety and security on a material level. So it's the income that we earn. So during this Venus in Leo transit, you will very likely be thinking about money. It's possible that income could shift if you have a career, a business, or, or if you don't have a regular paycheck, let's say that. If your income already fluctuates, there could be more of that fluctuation happening during this transit. You will likely do a financial review. You will likely look, check in on your spending plan on, do I need to make more money? Uh, am I good with my resources? This transit is happening across from your eighth house, which is shared resources. That is also a relationship house. That is not only energy, time, money, and resources that we share with a partner or with significant others, but it's also clients. So especially if you have your own business, you could find yourself having more interactions with clients around um, money, perhaps, or this could be a really good time to do some introspective work about your own beliefs around money. If you feel any lack in this area, if you feel like you'd like to increase your income, this would be a really good time to do some soul searching, some self-love work around finances and self-worth. And as I mentioned earlier in the video, I have a video for you on YouTube that is about inner child healing, worthiness and deserving. So Cancer, my advice to you is what I said earlier in this video, which is no self-abandonment, putting you first. This may feel like a quiet transit for you. This may be a transit where you need to spend more time alone, or you could have stuff issues come up around material possessions, trying to decide, should I sell something or not? This is actually a really good transit for selling things that you don't value anymore, but it is all about your values, checking in with your values. What do I need most now? What do I value most? Do I want to hold on to this? Do I want to sell that? Do I want to give that away? That could, this is great transit for doing some calling of your physical things. Okay, Cancer, so now I'm gonna pull a card for you. And because you Cancers are so giving to others, I really wanna impress upon you that if you are invited to any kind of gathering, and it's one where there could be people who have hurt you in the past, and you don't feel like you wanna spend time, you feel like there, it's an environment that potentially could be difficult for you emotionally, I just want to remind you that you get to make that choice. I know that's probably so obvious to you, but sometimes we forget that in our desire to please others, we forget that it's very important to take care of that sweet inner child inside of us. You get a pass to walk away or leave any environment that isn't feeling good to you in any moment. Okay, so your card, beautiful Cancer. Your card is Guidance. It says, ask for guidance. The divine will meet your every need. So if you feel any moments during this Venus retrograde that where your needs are not being met, where you, are, you have expectations that are not being met, because cancers, we cancers, we just want everyone to love everyone else. We want to be in love. We want them to love us. We want everything to feel good and warm and nurturing. And, you know, we love intimacy, right? We love that kind of atmosphere. But if you have moments like that that are not happening the way you planned, which often happens during a Venus retrograde, know that the divine will meet your every need. You are not alone. It's just a matter of tuning into that higher guidance, asking for help, asking for support, and at the very least, take your inner child out to play. Give yourself whatever you need to feel better if you have a moment like that. Beautiful cancer. And some of you may have a beautiful, beautiful Venus retrograde period. So I don't want to give the impression that this is all going to be about dashed hopes and expectations. Not necessarily. This is really going to depend on where your personal planets and placements are in your chart. And this is why, you know, this is a general reading. But for those of you who want to know more specifically, how will your planets be touched during this transit, I encourage you to check out my astrology consultations. I can do a personal reading for you and share that information with you. 
Okay, Gemini's, beautiful Gemini's. Hello, Gemini family. My natal sun is in Gemini. Gemini's, you guys are having this transit of Venus and Leo and Venus and Leo retrograde in your third house. You rule the third house, Gemini's. This is communication. This is mindset. This is your devices. It's neighbors and your immediate environment. So neighbors, siblings, cousins, uncles, and aunts. Gemini's, for those of you who are not aware of this, Gemini's are always seeking their soul sisters and their soul brothers. They're always wanting to have that feeling, being the sign of the twins and the lovers. We're always wanting to have that feeling of a close sibling, a close person in our life. So some of you could experience drama during this time with siblings or with neighbors. Others of you could reconnect with old friends or meet new soul brothers and sisters during this time. Others of you could have miscommunications with people. Uh, Mercury retrograde will also be part of this, as I talked about earlier in the video when I went through the timeline and the aspects. There is a Mercury retrograde overlapping with this Venus retrograde towards the end. So. That could feel like a time when you are stepping back a little bit from your communications or you're trying to just get clear on things. Not a good time for big purchases. Not a good time to buy a new car or buy a new cell phone or laptop or that kind of thing. But Gemini's, the good news is that Leo makes a sextile to your sign. So this is really beautiful positive energy flow and opportunity. So if even if something comes up during this time that's difficult, know that there's an opportunity for you right around the corner when you let go of whatever is not a match for your energy. When you walk away, if it's toxic, if the people around you or that you're with that any event or anything else feel toxic to you, you can walk away and a new opportunity will present itself. Okay, so Gemini's, I've been shuffling the cards and now I'm going to pull a card for you. Gems. Venus retrograde and Leo for my gems. And your card is pleasure, Gemini, pleasure. What a perfect Venus in Leo card. It says, do something just for fun. Pleasure is one of life's essential nutrients. So have you been prioritizing pleasure, Gemini? If not, during this Venus retrograde, you're really going to feel it if you haven't been. And this is a big call to prioritize pleasure. Do something wonderful for yourself. There's a cat here. There are two cats here with her. So perfect for Gemini's, the twos. Gemini's do everything twice, oftentimes, FYI. Um, if you do something once and it doesn't go well and you have to redo it, know that that is a Gemini thing. We're definitely here to learn, 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 and learn some more. So you've got this crystal ball in front of you. You can tune into your higher guidance. Keep around you animals or totems or guides or stones, anything amulets that make you feel connected to the divine, beautiful Gemini, because you, Gemini, are divine in and of yourself. Okay, Taurus. Hello, beautiful Taurus. You're having this transit of Venus in Leo and Venus retrograde in Leo. In your fourth house, your fourth house is your home, your family, your childhood conditioning. It's your roots, your roots. So you could have something come up during this Venus retrograde that has to do with your family relationships, issues from childhood, past life issues even. Uh, you could have a healing during this time. You could go to a family reunion or some other family gathering and have something come up that shows you a truth that you haven't seen before and gives you the opportunity to heal that. We're going to have a period of Venus making a trying to Chiron, as I said earlier in the video. It's going to be very healing for everyone, and you may really appreciate that time especially. There could be some family drama during this time for you to navigate and learn from and grow from. There could also be a very sweet family reunion happening during this time. It all depends on your personal planets and the transits that are happening to those planets or points. And that is a personal reading. This is a good time to say no to a remodel. I would not remodel. I would not build a house during this time. I would not do anything permanent. However, if you do, you may very likely find it more arduous or that you have to go back and redo some things. This is a beautiful time to do inner child work. It's a beautiful time to do shadow work, to really help your inner child feel more safe and secure. 
And it's also a good time to look for a new home if you want a new home, to go out and search and seek and enjoy. Look for new environments if you want to be in a new environment. Enjoy that that looking process, that exploration process. And then when you get closer to Venus retrograde ending, then, and it ends, that's the time then to go ahead and make the purchase or sign the lease. Um, so now, beautiful Taurus, let's pull a card for you. Taurus, fourth house transit. Your card is gratitude. Say thank you. Experience the joy of acknowledging others. So there's something here about using gratitude, I think, both to lift and strengthen your own self during this time. And of course, it's good at all the time. It makes us feel more abundant when we are in gratitude. But also there's something here when it talks about acknowledging others, something that could really heal, I feel, a relationship. If you do find yourself, Taurus, having a deep discussion with somebody in your family or someone that you, you know, a roommate, someone you share your home with, if you find yourself having someone that is rooted, you know, is part of your roots in some way, this could be an uncle, or it could be, you know, a close family friend, acknowledging them, acknowledge what they've given to you, acknowledging their strengths, acknowledging your love for them could really have a healing influence. This is a really healing card. You see all the light around her. There's, she's an angel. You know, it's also a reminder to tune into your angels to ask them for help and remember that you are not alone. You are not alone. Even if you have something difficult come up, Venus retrograde in the fourth house is fourth house is a very personal, personal house. It can really pull us in, inward strongly. Even if you have something come up that makes you feel sad or lonely, know that that's coming up so you can process an emotion that you haven't processed in the past. So feel the feelings, let them move through you. And then the sun, the sun and Leo always returns. The sun will be coming out on your life and you'll feel so much better. So much better. Beautiful Taurus. Okay, Aries, beautiful Aries. Hello. You guys are having this transit of Venus in Leo and Venus retrograde in Leo in your fifth house. The fifth house is ruled by Leo. The fifth house is the house of pleasure, the house of play, of joy, of spontaneity. It's the inner child, very much your inner child. Creativity, children, true love, and romance. Aries romance. <laughs> so for those of you who are single, for those of you who want romance in your life, or you want to increase the romance in your current relationship, this is the time to be very intentional about that. Just know that oftentimes a romance that starts either either right before a Venus retrograde or during a Venus retrograde often is like it's the fast burn, as we say. It's like super fun and euphoric and giddy and amazing, but we can project things onto the other person that are not true about them that then bring us down with a big thud, right? <laughs> so I want you to avoid that thud if at all possible. I want you to avoid becoming a puddle, as a friend once said to me becoming a puddle. We don't want anyone becoming a puddle. Um, you know, this isn't like not a happy puddle. <laughs> I want you to feel in your power, Aries. I want you to feel in your power. And what I love about Venus and Leo is there's actually a warrior in that that connects very much with your inner warrior. So just know that if you feel like somebody is not being completely upfront with you, watch for the red flags. Just be very aware of the red flags, Aries, and you will be absolutely fine. And heed the red flags. Heed them. Okay, so you might have a second chance in love. Um, uh, there could be a return of a karmic relationship. And this is a time to go slow, be cautious, let the person really reveal themselves before you make any sort of commitments or before you decide that they are the one, the one, the one, before you decide that and get your inner child all hopeful and, and attached before you do that, just go slow. If you can possibly do that, which is a lot for an Aries, I know. I have Mars and Aries. I don't like going slow either, but I am working on going slow because it's so much better for my heart. So much better for my heart. Okay, so your inner child, give your inner child extra TLC. This is a time to really, really increase your connection with your inner child. No self abandonment, Aries. Do not abandon yourself for anyone else or to please another. And Aries, because the fifth house is all about creativity as well, 
This is a beautiful time to let yourself do process art. Process art is art that we do without any, any attachment to the outcome. So like painting from your heart, journaling, automatic writing, dancing, rekindling the creative fire in your belly, doing something that inspired you when you were a child, perhaps, playing music, channeling song lyrics, any of those things could really reignite your inner child. Okay, shuffling the cards for you now. Shuffling the cards for beautiful Aries. And let's pull a card for you. What do the cards have to say, Aries? Your card is achievement. Achievement. Chase your dreams. You may be surprised by where they lead you. This card is very ethereal to me. There is a child who's running. She's wearing a dress she absolutely loves. It's probably her favorite dress. I think she's holding in some sort of umbrella, it looks like. But I feel a lot of playfulness and freedom, Aries. I feel so much freedom from this inner child. And then the butterfly and the light. You are coming out of the chrysalis into a butterfly. You are becoming the butterfly, many of you. And I feel like this is saying you, you're a high achiever, no question, you love achieving. But if you chase a dream that you don't know, you don't know the outcome of, you don't know where it might lead you, sometimes in Aries energy, we can be like, I'm only doing this if it'll have a certain outcome. And then we, we, you know, we don't always know what the outcome is going to be. We don't always know why we're being led to do something. So to me, this is really saying, allow yourself to do something that you don't know what the outcome is going to be so that you can receive the juiciness of life. You may be surprised where a dream will lead you, beautiful Aries. Okay, Pisces. Hello, Pisces. You guys are having this transit of Venus and Leo, Venus retrograde in Leo, in your sixth house of work, of health, of your everyday routines, your daily habits, your structures of life. So this is where you're doing a review, where you're reevaluating, where you're really checking in with yourself on how is my health? This is a time that you may really want to be assessing your daily routine, your daily schedules, your sleep habits. Are they healthy for you? Do you feel in your full vitality? If not, what do you need to do to increase your vitality, Pisces? That's, those are the kinds of things that are going on for you. This is a good time to do a cleanse or a physical detox, let go of any substances that you take in your body that aren't good for you. This is a shedding of a skin kind of transit for you. Um, evaluating your work. Am I still inspired in my work? Am I working too hard? Do I want to do different work? And then simplifying your schedule. This is a really good time to simplify your schedule to do less. Less is more during this Venus retrograde period for you, Pisces. Less is more. A time for you to have some open space to reflect and to take care of your body and to take care of your needs at work and to not push hard if you've been pushing hard. Okay, so let's pull a card for you, Pisces. <sighs> your card is retreat. Take a mini retreat. Listen to the voice of your soul. You may want to journal. You may want to do some automatic writing. You may just want to get extra rest. You may want to take a spa retreat somewhere. You may want to spend more time in meditation, Pisces. Do more yoga. Something physical would be really good for a sixth house Venus retrograde transit. But big picture, allow yourself some time off. For those of you in the Northern Hemisphere, it is summertime. It is a really good time to take some time off. So happy Venus retrograde in Leo. Time for you. Time for your inner child. Time to put you first. Beautiful Pisces. Okay, Aquarius. Hello, beautiful Aquarians. Aquarius, you're having this transit of Venus in Leo and Venus retrograding in Leo in your seventh house of partnerships. Now, as I spoke about in the beginning of this video, Venus rules relationships. Venus also rules money and 
pleasure and beauty and comforts, but it rules relationships. So you are probably very much going to be feeling this transit, especially if you have planets or points. In the fixed signs and the degrees that I mentioned earlier in this video, I believe it was 10 to 29 degrees of your sign or the other fixed signs. Now, expect that you will be emotionally triggered, Aquarius. This is the time for you to review, reevaluate, and maybe renegotiate your relationships, or at least a relationship, an important relationship. You will most likely be triggered. We are more emotionally sensitive during a Venus retrograde than we are doing a regular you know, Venus direct transit. Something may feel off or missing to you in a relationship. I love what my colleague Robert Holden says. When something is missing in our lives, that something missing is us. It's us. So reconnect with yourself first. Make this a self-love transit, beautiful Aquarius. And after you do that reconnection with you, after you spend quality time for yourself, take a soul date with yourself that I talk about in my book, The Magic of Saying Yes. After you do that, then you'll have a better sense of, do you really have to, uh, is there really something important for you to bring up with your partner or, your, or a significant other? Or was it more about you filling up your own cup? You won't know that until you give yourself what you really need, beautiful Aquarius. So some of you are going to be setting new boundaries. Some of you are going to be experiencing a breakup during this time. I'm sorry to say that, but if that's true, you probably already have an inkling that that's coming. And some of you may just take a break from your partner so that you can get more clarity and perhaps coming back together or perhaps not, not when the Venus retrograde is over. So, you know, it's all fluid. We're in process. Don't make any... You know, th these videos on the astrology is not about making you scared of what might happen. Astrology is about empowering you to prepare yourself to know the trances that are coming that are always for us to work with. You can always take your power back in any transit. And this is the best use of astrology. So let's pull a card for you, beautiful Aquarius. Aquarius, your card is clearing. Clear the clutter. When in doubt, throw it out. So this is a simplifying transit for you. Sometimes when there's so much clutter around us, we can't think. It could be mental clutter. It could be physical. It could be emotional. It could be spiritual clutter. It could be you realizing you have a different belief system maybe than someone who's important to you. And is that a deal breaker for you or not? It could be you realizing but yeah, your partner's complaining about all the clutter in your house and your, car, your partner has a point. So sometimes our significant others have a good point, right? But do what you need to do to lighten your load to feel better, Aquarius, so you can see your partner with true eyes, with real eyes, with uplifted eyes. Raise your own vibration and then you'll be able to see, is my partnership still a beautiful match for me? And when in doubt, and I'm talking about your clutter here, when in doubt, let it go, clear it out. Okay, Capricorns, beautiful Capricorn, you are having this transit of Venus in Leo and Venus retrograding in Leo in your eighth house. Your eighth house is your house of transformation. It is death and rebirth. This is where we do the deep dive inner work. So this will be most likely for most of you, a transit that you're really going to be doing some self-discovery, seeing a new truth about yourself. Eighth house is power, personal power and power struggles sometimes with others, intimacy, shared resources. This is a relationship house. It's a money house. So often during an eighth house Venus transit, we're dealing with money stuff with a partner or we're dealing with our own uh, money situations with like institutions, banks, investment companies, but we're looking at our finances and we're also looking at our intimacy, our level of intimacy with our partners. Are we connecting? Are we satisfied? Are we fulfilled? Are we both showing up with open hearts? Are we both showing up? Are we growing together? That may be a question that you asked during this transit. Are we growing together? And if there are issues of power and control coming up, during this Venus retrograde, which is very possible. Remember when, you, when you're in a tug of war with someone, someone has to let go of the rope. And the sooner you let go of the rope, usually the happier you are. 
So pick your battles. Don't sweat the small stuff. Ask spirit to show you any truth that is yet to be revealed to you that would be helpful. And I've been shuffling the cards, but I feel like this is a transit in which you're really going to see the light about anything that you need to see the light on beautiful Capricorn. And your card is, ah, your card is nature. Spend time in nature. Take a walk. Let the beauty of nature feed your soul. Have you been spending enough time in nature, Capricorn, in the, norm, in the northern hemisphere? This is going to be a time of good weather for a lot of us where we can be out and about more July and August, early September. Um, this feels like, you know, a metaphor for reflection. You can see the reflection on the water. You can see her flying above her life, looking at her life, getting clarity. So I feel that you're going to get a lot of clarity during this Venus retrograde transit. And if you get into a spat or a fight, a knockdown drag out fight with your significant other, take a walk, take a walk, you know, separate yourselves so that it doesn't escalate and so that you can come down to earth, put your feet in the soil, in the water, in, on the sand and reconnect with your beautiful spirit, beautiful Capricorn, reconnect with you. Okay, Sagittarius. Hello, beautiful Sages. So the full moon in Sag is coinciding with Venus going into Leo. And Sag and Leo are cousins in the sense that you're both fire signs. So this makes a trine to your energy, which is really lovely. That's positive energy flow. It's grace and ease. The ninth house, that is your spiritual expansion. That's expansion on all levels. This, this is your belief systems. This is also higher learning. It's where you go back and get a master's degree or a PhD. Um, you could be questioning. Some of you who are in school right now, you could be questioning, do I want to stay with this, this program? Some of you who have very, uh, maybe beliefs that you were raised with, that you were part of your conditioning, you could be questioning. A Venus retrograde is where we're reassessing, we're reviewing, we are wondering, is this, whatever it is, still right for me in my life? This is also a teaching house. It's the house of teaching and learning. So you could also be exploring, what do I want to learn next? What kind of program do I want to take? Maybe you want to do a certification program. Maybe you want to learn more about astrology. You could also be contemplating foreign travel, long distance travel. Do you want to move someplace new? Do you want to vacation someplace new? Some of you may be traveling to a new foreign land during this Venus retrograde period as well. If so, just know things don't always go or often do not go according to our plans during a Venus retrograde. When we're seeking beauty, sometimes we get beauty mixed with a little bit of muck. And if that happens, it's because it's meant to grow us and <laughs> expand us and transform us. Um, I will also be traveling during this time, not to a foreign land, but I will be going back to see my kids and I will be renting an Airbnb to stay in, to do my work in and so on while I'm there. So I will also be um, experiencing a different location. So a lot of us will do that during a Venus retrograde and it can really bring some things to light, but also really expand and grow us. So sad to Sagittarius, this is a really important time for you to decide. Do you want to go into new territory? I'm talking metaphorically, but do you want to go into new territory with your learning, with your speaking, perhaps with publishing, maybe thinking about publishing something, maybe writing something during this time that you then will publish, you will launch, maybe working on a website that you will then launch when Venus goes direct. So I've been shuffling the card, Sag, and Let's pull a card for you. Ah, Sagittarius, Sagittarius. I love this card for you guys. Risk. Take a risk. Take a risk. You have the power within to move mountains, beautiful Sagittarius. Move mountains. I love the coinciding of the full moon in your sign, which I have a separate video on for you. The full moon in your sign, I love that that coincides with Venus going into Leo. I think that is so beautiful. And you guys are risk takers. The Leos are risk takers as well. All the fire signs are willing to take a risk in order to reap the rewards. 
So th this is your marching order. You're being asked to do this. And I know you might say, why would I take a risk during a Venus retrograde? It's going to grow you. It's going to stretch you. It's going to expand you. Uh, your spirit isn't going to guide you to do anything that is just all about, you know, a missed step. I moved to Laguna Beach, as I spoke about earlier in the video, during a Venus retrograde. I did that because I felt guided. And there are a lot of beautiful things that happened during that time. There were some uncomfortable things I had to work through, but there were a lot of really fun, beautiful things. So take a risk, beautiful Sag. You are divinely guided. Okay, Scorpio. Hello, beautiful Scorpios. You guys are having this transit of Venus in Leo and Venus retrograding in Leo in your 10th house of career. Are you thinking about a different career? Are you revising, analyzing, evaluating, looking back to another career perhaps that you had in your past? This is the time you're going to be doing that reflection. Career, life purpose, um, fulfillment, how you want to spend your time, how you want to spend the bulk of your time, where you want to give to others, where you want to give back some of you, retirement, some of you, semi-retirement, others of you. This is a time that you're going to be thinking about all of these things. When Venus retrogrades, that's when we're looking back. That's when we're looking inward. We're really reflecting. So this is a time of career, life, purpose, meaning reflection for all of you guys. Also, Scorpio, because you have the fourth house across from your 10th house, this 10th house transit, you may also be reflecting on your home life. You may be deciding that, do I want to move or not? Do I want to change something in my relationship dynamics with my parents, with my roommates, or anyone else that you live with? Do I want to make changes to my home? You could fall out of love with a vocation or fall out of love with a home during this time since Venus and Leo is all about falling in love. So I've been shuffling the cards, beautiful Leos, and also Scorpio, Leo makes a square to your sign. So there could be, you could feel some tension or pressure to make some decisions around career or around your home life, what you're going to do next, your direction. You could feel that, I, that sense of urgency and just know that this period of time between July 22nd and September 3rd is a time for you to get clarity on the decision that you want to make, the steps that you want to take once Venus goes direct. Okay, so let's pull a card for Scorpios. Ah, Scorpio, I love this card for you. You got passion. Passion. Resurrect a childhood dream. That is so Venus and Leo retrograde. Oh my gosh. Resurrect, resurrecting something, reaching into your past and pulling it forward. What did you want to do when you were young, Scorpio? What did you want to do when you were not afraid of the outcome, when you weren't all about your responsibilities and future thinking and all that? What did you want to do? What lit you up? This says, let that passion take flight. And I know it's very easy to come up with all the reasons why something's not practical, why something doesn't make sense, why we can't do it, all of the no, this, the yes, but, yes, but, yes, but. First, Scorpio, give it some airtime. Journal about it. Write about it. Write down your fears. Speak your fears a lot. Hire a coach to work through those fears. I do that with my clients. Work with somebody if you feel like you are stuck and you do not want to follow your passion because you have a lot of reasons why. Work with somebody who can help you to get really clear on what's true, what's really holding you back, and what's not, and what is best for your heart at this point in time in your life. Beautiful Scorpio. Leave me a comment. Let me know if that resonates for you. Okay, Libras. Hello, beautiful Libras. You guys are having this transit of Venus in Leo and Venus in Leo retrograde in your 11th house. 11th house is friendships, groups, communities, social media, where we are networking online. 11th house really is where we are being very, very social in one way or another. Often it's through online um, you know, groups and communities, but it's also our friendships. So you may be reviewing friendships. You may have a friend come into your life, a new friend. You may have an 
old friend leave your life during this time. This is a real turnover time often for our relationships. Leo makes a sextile to your sign, which is really beautiful energy. It's a new opportunity. So you could very well have something new come in, a new contact, a new friend, a new group, a new, you go to a new meetup group and you meet somebody or, you know, anything can come from these contacts. You can expand your work. You can expand your um, social life. You can expand your money, your finances. A lot can happen through saying yes to an opportunity. Beautiful Libra. This is also the house of long-term gains, hopes, wishes, and dreams. So this is a really good time to dream big, to do a vision board, to expand what you feel is possible for you, to expand your container of abundance, as I speak about in my Jupiter in Taurus video. So if you haven't watched that video, I will link it below because that is something that might be really helpful for you during this Venus in Leo time. So here's the cards. We're shuffling. Now I'm going to pull a card for you. Libras. Beautiful Libra. Your card is friendship. This is happening in your house of friendships. <laughs> you can't make this stuff up. When you're mirrored with love, you see yourself clearly. Call a friend. Call a friend. So you can be mirrored with love, Libra. If you feel during this time lonely, some a friendship friend checks out of your life, you feel sad, you don't know what's going on, call a friend. And if you don't have a friend that you can call, you can call a coach. You can schedule a coaching appointment with, with me or with another coach, but get support if you need support. Beautiful Libra. Okay, Virgos, thank you for your patience, Virgos. You guys are having this transit of Venus and Leo and Venus retrograding in Leo in your 12th house, your 12th house of retreat, of rest, of healing the subconscious mind. This is where we rewire our subconscious mind. This is also the house of dreams, nighttime dreams, where we do the deep, deep dive. The You know, it's really transformational often to have a transit here. So you could be coming into contact with belief systems, some unconscious beliefs. You could be coming into contact with things that you have not ever thought about, doing some ancestral healing during this time perhaps as well. Um, it's a really beautiful Venus in retrograde placement. It really is beautiful. So much could come to light during this time. So much could heal for you, especially when we have the aspect I spoke about in the video earlier, Venus retrograde making a trine to Chiron, Chiron the wounded healer, our deepest wound. Beautiful period of time mid-August for us to heal something that has been buried within. So gorgeous placement of this Venus and Leo transit. So I've been shuffling your cards, shuffle another time here, and let's pull a card for Virgos. <sighs> Virgo. And your card is independence. You're becoming the butterfly. Decide for yourself, Virgo. If there's something that comes up during this transit that you need to decide, decide for yourself. Exercise your right to choose. I feel like this is a card about sovereignty. It's saying even if there's a part of you that feels like you have to decide what's best for another person what's, or you need approval from others for your decision, mm -mm. you are the decider of your life. Yes, you can get support. You can ask other people's opinions. You can talk to neutral people who don't have an agenda for you. Those who have agendas for you, those really close people in your life that often want you to do it in a way that is most, most comfortable for them. Maybe you don't put so much weight on their opinion, but you can work with somebody like me, a coach or somebody else that can help you to can mirror back to you what they see from a neutral point of view. Those of us who don't have an investment in the decision that you make. Ultimately, Virgo, through this process, you will come out of the chrysalis and be the butterfly and feel so proud of yourself for making a decision that you feel you made really independently, taking your sovereignty, your self-love, your self-value to the next level. My beautiful friend, if you would like a personal astrology consultation, if you would like to know how are your natal placements, your planets and points going to be activated by Venus in Leo, by Venus retrograding in Leo. How will this affect you on a personal level? I can do a personal astrology consultation with you. You can choose a heart's desire reading. 
a natal chart reading or a life purpose reading, whatever rings most true for you, whatever you need most now. And for every astrology reading, I look at the current transits for you. I look at the future transits for you. And we look at what is your natal chart say about the areas of your life that are most important to you, your gifts, your talents, your potential, any decisions that you're trying to make. A lot of you want to know about your love lives. A lot of you want to know about career. Some of you are going through health issues. Some of you are dealing with boundary issues with significant people in your life. Whatever it is, your chart really speaks to me on an intuitive level as well as on an astrological level. And it is my joy to empower you. It is my joy to shine light for you on whatever you need to know in order to move powerfully forward. So I invite you to go to my website, check out my consultations. To book a reading, all you have to do is choose the reading you want, choose your time zone, you can choose the best available time for you. Thank you so much for joining me during this Venus in Leo, Venus retrograding in Leo video. It is my joy to spend time with you. Remember to give this video a thumbs up, remember to give it a like, leave me a comment, let me know what resonated for you. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Your subscribes really help my channel grow. And don't forget to tap the notification bell so you are notified, you're reminded when I upload my next video. Thank you to my Sunday chat friends for being here. It's so much fun to commune with you. Don't forget to leave me a comment in the comment box as well. And until my next video, my friend, I'm sending you all my love.